respected elder brothers and sisters and the younger brothers and sisters. I really feel great honor. You should come here and I'll say interact with interact with young human being because you are the generation who can create better world as an Indian, young Indian. Firstly, you can create peaceful, happy society within this country. And then India, most populated democratic country and a long history. And particularly this country, I think really produce wonderful human thinkers, uh, human philosopher. Even I can say uh, some of the greatest of thinkers of the ancient time of India, actually we can call scientists because they emphasize reality. Because of that, very much sort of investigate about the reality. So this country, even 2,000 years, some masters already found concept of quantum physics. So this country, I think, really have great potential to build healthy, happy society. So you are the generation who will create that kind of society. And then India, as I mentioned earlier, most populated nation and modern time, democratic country, very peaceful, very much based on the concept of ahimsa, non-violence, even you see the world, very complicated world, India still preserves you see, that concept. So therefore you have some potential to make significant contribution for a better world. So indeed I'm very, very happy having this opportunity. Then I was told you see, this school, uh, generally speaking, quite young. Uh, and then here, you see the place, environment, and these buildings. Yeah. Wonderful. School, school buildings. Oh, young. Yeah. So school playground. Oh. So the environment looks young, looks, you see, long future. There's some building, a gigantic way. Gigantic. Gigantic. But the life of that sort of building now begin and <laughs> here, just the beginning. As well as the student here, young, bright student. So when I so come here, when I sort of Kasuda, I come outside, when I saw you, and firstly inside so kindergarten children. Really, very fresh. <laughs> and some of the children, you see, they colored here, they sort of acting like old person. <laughs> so very, very sort of, they, their mind very clean, not polluted. If may I say so, our, my gen, our generation, a little bit polluted in our mind. <laughs> you see, because of the modern education system, 
system is very much oriented about material value. So generation who come through that kind of education in their mind always think wealth, wealth, money. And with that, power. And with that, how to cheat, how to exploit other, how to bully other. These things happen. Now today's major portion of conflict, suffering, violence, actually related the uh, disrespect others' right, others' well-being. Just think one step. I want more power. I want more money. Uh, and don't care about others' right. That's the basis of all these man-made conflict. Because, you see, education, very much oriented about material value, not talking much about our inner value. Now simply say, or oh, be nice person, honest person, but you see, without systematic sort of way to approach, you see, these basic values. So therefore, uh, these young people, uh, I always telling the generation of 21st century, uh, that means, oh, that's very good. Very good. So generation of 21st century, you are the uh, generation who can turn world more I said, yeah, unjust uh, world without much moral principle that can eventually turn into humanity with more moral conviction about the value of moral ethics, irrespective whether believer or non-believer. Here also is India. I think a thousand years, at least three thousand years, this country already found concept of secularism. Secular means respect all religion and also respect non-believer. That is something very unique. Like one school of thought, ancient Indian school of thought, Chavaka, non-believer. So rest of spiritual school of thought criticize and condemn sometimes, but still refer those people who hold that, that view, that concept, still refer Rishi. That means sage, respect. So that's, I think, unique, this country. Secular concept, respect all religion, and also respect non-believer. Now, today's world, uh, out of seven billion, over one billion are actually non-believer. So the effort to promote these ethics or moral principle through religious or say a concept where and then these people won't pay much, won't listen. We are non believer. So anything which is based on religion, we have no interest. So the, the other that so therefore there is no other alternative except India's thousand-year-old tradition, secular way, is to educate non-believer. 
Doesn't matter. Remain as a non-believer. Okay. If you find that is more sort of suitable to individual, okay, absolutely right. But still, these non-believers are human beings. These non-believers also come from their mother. They're nurtured by mother's affection. So non-believers' body, you see, very much sort of absorbed by mother's affection. So these non-believers also, you see, loves friendship, smile. So, smile, oh, of course, smile. We human beings quite sort of smart. So sometimes I think nature, human beauty, one of the beauty is smile. But that also sometimes, you see, used for a diplomatic smile. That sometimes creates more suspicion. And sarcastic, sarcastic, sarcastic. Uh, sarcastic sort of smile. That creates some irritation or sadness on other people. But genuine human smile really brings happy. Genuine smile comes from trust friendship. No matter you are uh, that person, you have some because of the relative or not. Any stranger show you smile. You feel happy, safe. So these are the basic, so those non-believers also love these things. Then we can ask them, since they want love, affection, trust, friendship. We can ask, can you buy friendship by money, by force, by medicine, by alcohol, by drugs? No. We are social animals. We need friendship in order to make a genuine friend trust, open heart, is the key factor. Because trust, fear cannot go together. Once you close your own sort of heart and remain distant, how can you develop trust? You must open your heart, treat them as a human brother, sister. Seriously, because I told you, I open it right now. Then trust come. Even animal, dogs, cats. You see, they have. They they also see some kind of social animal. You see, they naturally they also you see loves our affection. When we show dogs, cats more affection. They response. They cannot speak. We cannot communicate with human language. But their face, eyes, and has a dogs, and also is a cat, because they tail. tail shows friendship, if affection. Since several decades, I have one curiosity. Like a mosquito whether they have the ability to show appreciation or affection to, to others. That's my curiosity. Many occasions, including Oxford University, one occasion, my talk in the front line, some Oxford sort of professors, an old, dignified Tarukasa professors, you see, they went there. And I asked, do you know something about brain? Which size of brain have the ability to show appreciation? And then I make sort of the, I said the example. I have sort of experience when my mood is good, happy, and also you see quite sort of the show, no malaria, sort of what sort of thing. 
then occasionally I give blood to mosquito. So the mosquito looks, enjoy my blood. Their whole body becomes red and fat. <laughs> then simply they fly. No show of appreciation. No sign of appreciation. <laughs> so, so therefore, I'm wondering, insects, animals, birds, dogs, these, even birds, if you show affection, they also respond. So the smaller sort of mammals or insects, I don't know. I think fish also. When I was in Tibet, and in, in the Nobulinga, summer palace, there's one kasa, a pond, you see, a man made to the pond. Hmm? So there are a lot of sort of fish. So I usually see feeding them. So then, when I sort of, the kasa, walk, no. see the steps, I don't know what they sort of, what they, because of the understand or differentiation, right? Oh. Mi, 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 mi. How can they differentiate? Uh, when it's in my walk, sound comes, then these fish come. Uh, then feeding. You know, while they uh, enjoy uh, some sort of bread or rice or some other thing, they, I think, as a sort of show of their joy, they some jump, like that. So even fish, I think, to some extent, they also have the ability to show appreciation. So they're more smaller, smaller, smaller. I don't know. So you are young. Eventually, some of you may become sort of Dr. Kasuri, Tirish Mishishime, scientist, ka. Researchers. So, if if one, one, one of you, you see, carry some research work, I think that those doc become sort of doctors, right? You have to sort of, kasu study, right? Biology, right? Uh, so that is just I I I want to to share. So in any way, this country. So therefore, this country. I think a secular concept is, I think, something ancient, but still very relevant to today's world. So through secular way, we can educate entire seven billion human beings through, through education, through kindergarten, like these children. Some occasion in America, some sign, uh, some sort of uh, talk, uh, some occasion, uh, talk, or uh, discuss with some scientist. You see, they uh, found human being as young as uh, two, three years old, younger than these children and show pictures, which some of the cartoon is showing. Uh, two sort of children uh, helping each other. Uh, and then, The response from very infant way, very infant children, when they uh, looking the picture, uh, two children helping each other, the, the child responds, happy smile. When a picture something has a humming each other, has a hurting way. No, obstructing. Uh, obstructing each other. The child, a little sort of unhappy sort of 
attitude. So these scientists concluded basic human nature is more compassionate. It's quite logical. We are a social animal. So therefore, I think social animal, you see, in order to, no, no, okay. In order to bring together, firstly, our physical action, smile, and show love, trust. Uh, then also, you see, sometimes I jokingly say, telling people, our physical structure, you see, this hand and nails and our teeth. Uh, I think birds, I think dogs, I think they are sort of physical fit because of the structure. I think not easy to, to, to show smile. Oh, like monkey, sometimes monkey also smile. So this physical face structure is a very fit smile. And this hand, you see, go like that. Isn't it? Animal, horse or dogs, they have no ability. Go like that. Only, only like that. <laughs> and there are sort of legs, you see, the car, sorry. Car. With who? Good. Go like that. For their different, different, different strength. Different. You see, no ability. So, so our hand, I think physical structure, go like that, smile. Isn't it? Then more important, mind, emotion level. Social animal, individual survival depend on rest of the community. Uh, so there must be something emotionally to bring together. That's love, affection. Anger, fear, suspicion, expect. So since we are social animal, this very physical structure is ready to show affection. So scientists, medical scientists, through their experiment, they now state, some of them state, the constant fear, anger uh, happen. It actually eating our immune system. Too much of disturbed mind, very bad for our health. For good health, calm mind is very essential. So these days, these years, as we usually call, in order to develop healthy body, we need healthy mind. Healthy mind, not just educated sort of as they cause of the not cause of the knowledgeable. A knowledgeable sort of mind. But here, warm heartedness. So that brings calm mind. Because compassion, love towards other is to reduce fear, distrust. That brings self-confidence. That brings inner strength. That reduces fear. So, mind becomes more calm, relax. Sorry. Okay. Do you think this, this is quite complicated? <laughs> as complicated as those ladies of Kasa. 
address. <laughs> I think your sari also quite complicated, isn't it? <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so, so therefore, if you pay more attention about thousand year old your tradition, not just of just of the Hasidic, because of part of culture, think more seriously. Then uh, you can firstly you can build one happy individual. Through that way, one happy family. Through that way, ten family, hundred family, thousand families, that means society or community. So you can build happy community or society. Then you see one country, you see carry, you see these sort of what's the uh, education or systematic sort of or so education way to build inner peace. Then I think more and more other countries also pay more attention. Usually wherever I give talk in the West, I always mention India is the example nation where all major religious traditions can live together harmoniously. Of course, Occasionally, some problem that is quite understandable. But the overall picture, I think this country is very unique. All major world religious traditions live together. So, uh, that also is very much related with concept of secularism and ahimsa. So, therefore, you see, you can, uh, you can be good example how to build healthy mind and healthy body okay healthy body not totally relying on medicines or some other external means but through your own peace of mind you see you can build healthy body and your lifespan also you see can be longer okay so these young people uh, you have the potential there and you have the, because of the opportunity or time also there. Our generation, including myself, now I think the German, how old? Sir, how old are you? 75? 78. 76 or 78? 78. Oh. I think I'm oldest, now nearly 80 years old. <laughs> so, so you see, our generation belongs to 20th century. So now 20th century already gone. So the generation of 20th century now ready to say goodbye. <laughs> but this uh, generation of 21st century, you just the beginning. Uh, like this century also beginning. So your life also beginning. So you will be the real maker, new maker or new builder of this 21st century. So please think, not only just, just as a day-to-day -day problem or sort of your own national level, think humanity. Now, uh, really we need a sense of oneness of seven billion human beings. That really need. So, through education, the uh, systematic way, I think you can, uh, can be, I think, Kasoda, was the real contributor of happy 21st century. So please think that. In order to make effective contributor, your uh, brain should be 
proper development and develop holistic view combined with sense of responsibility here and with wider perspective or sort of vision then you can build this century a happy century peaceful century so there what one my quotation uh, sometimes you feel oh world problem is immense i cannot do much don't think that change of the world should take and should start by human being no other animal cannot do only we and we human being because obviously most of the trouble who create not animal but human being so logically you see we have this sort of responsibility to create better world so then individual humanity means combination of individual change new effort must start from individual not government level not you know nations uh, not political leaders or spiritual leaders we individual ourselves so should have the feeling of i have certain moral responsibility and possibility i can make some contribution as i mentioned earlier you see from one individual then 10 uh, 10 individuals 100 100000 million billion go like that so start as uh, because effort must start from individual okay so that i want to to share with you uh with great hope and faith as a tibetan we also suffer a lot because of the lack of moral principle lack lack of compassion lack of the sense of oneness of humanity a lot of demarcation where demarcation where Uh, Discrimin- divisions discriminations now look at the world the discrimination on the basis of religion and now this country basis of caste system is maybe part of indian tradition but out of date it must change then this country also you see although very religious minded nation but corruption immense so sometimes i jokingly telling is my indian friends the indians uh, basically very religious minded sort of nation so each family and i think particularly the lady i think every morning i think some kind of worship uh, in the front of ganesh or friend of uh, brahma or shiva like that but you see it seems you see you pray to god or oh, my corrupted life should be successful <laughs> so like that here you see what so what's the story i often you see telling I think more than one decade ago, there was one Cuban refugee uh, who settled now in America because of Florida, sorry. Florida. Uh, Florida. You see, very religious minded, a Catholic, very religious minded. Uh, they see, told me, expressed to me, they in the church, whenever they go to ch- when church he said they pray to god please fidel castro 
should bring to heaven as soon as possible. <laughs> you know, that's very nice. Although he totally against Fidel Castro, the, uh, but uh, with love, with respect. So pray to God, please that troublemaker uh, bring to heaven. Uh, very nice. But since as they, they consider it as a troublemaker, so sooner the better. <laughs> so I think we also we should pray to God, those corrupted people, please bring to heaven, or oh, sooner the better. <laughs> okay. So therefore, you know, you see this, this corrupt, corruption, and with that, even the central government or state government spent a lot of money but the allocation of the money, amount of money, they are uh, quite substantial. But when they reach on public, on people, you see, remain much, much uh, new, reduced. much reduced. So the gap rich and the poor, also I think very much reduced with the corruption. So this, you Indian, the younger generation, generation of 21st century, should make effort you see, to, to eliminate these, uh, what's it, a certain sort of habit. Sometimes, unfortunately, with certain religious belief, caste system, if, if some sort of connection with religious belief, then these, I usually say make, I say they, uh, I say they, uh, sorry, usually you say, I say make differences, any religion. Religion, one aspect of religion, one aspect of culture, one aspect of philosophy. So the aspect of religion, all major religious tradition, same. Main teaching is love. For that teaching, also you see, include teaching of tolerance, forgiveness, uh, and contentment, and self-discipline. That part, all major tradition, same. Philosophical part, big differences. Basically, theistic religion, non-theistic religion, theistic means with the belief of God, Creator. Non-theistic religion know that concept, like Jainism and Buddhism and ancient one part of Sankhism. No concept of Creator, but rather self-creation. So future depends on some other force, but future depends on one's, one individual. So philosophically, big differences. And then also within non-theistic religion, the these three, the concept of atma and anatma, there are differences. But there's a philosophical part. I don't think the religious part. This different philosophy is necessary in order to serve variety of humanity, variety, variety of human beings with Men, different mental disposition. So therefore, these philosophical, different philosophical views are necessary. Something like different way of approach. The aim is same, compassion, forgiveness. Then third aspect is culture. I was told, you see, uh, at the time of Mahavira, the Jain, I said, the master, Kasur, Tampa Kasur, Jain founder, and then Buddha Shakyamuni, Buddha founder of Buddha Dharma. When they come in this country, animal sacrifice in the name of rituals, immense. So, because of that sort of circumstances, these two masters, 
particular emphasis about uh, ahimsa and also vegetarianism, particularly Jainism. Because of the circumstances, so cultural aspect like that, that I feel like that. Then Muslim, the Sharia law, because of the circumstances, that area, you see, a lot of crimes, criminals, right? So you see, uh, the Quran also, you see, deal how to punish these criminal people. So there is cultural aspect. Now cultural aspect, situation change, time change, must change. So the like caste system and some other, and also I think the Kasa Jisto. I heard as a husband and and husband passed away. Ah, they, you, you see the women, widow, not permit, re, I mean marriage, isn't it? Husband passed, passed away, and then the, the wife, then Kasuta, no right to Kasa. Remarry. Remarry. I was told, you see, uh, you see in sometimes in ancient time, when the husband passed away, when criminates were husband, the wife also stood together. What do you feel? Many, so what is it, many young, young girls. If uh, eventually you find one husband, and then the husband passed away, and when criminate your husband, you all can. Cremate or cremate your husband, you also cremate together. What do you feel? <laughs> I, I think that also is good, maybe good. And then nobody marry, <laughs> remain single person. <laughs> In, even Buddhist tradition, cultural aspect. Uh, certain point, I think uh, we have to sort of modify, we have to change. Because of the society sort of cultural, because of cultural aspect, when Buddha Shakyamuni was there 2,600 years ago, and today's world is different. So cultural aspect, I think all religion, is you should think very seriously whether certain sort of aspect or aspect cultural aspect, you see, uh, have to fit still or not. If not, so we have to change, like that. So, uh, so basically, you see, all religions, you see, uh, same message. So once we realize different philosophy, it's useful. Uh, then think. What is the purpose of these different philosophy? It's purpose same. To bring conviction here, this moral principle, the concept of creator, concept of God, very powerful method to develop firm conviction about this inner value. And also the uh, non-theistic law of causality uh, and self-creation. Also, you see, very sort of, as a powerful sort of method uh, to bring conviction. All responsibility is my own shoulder. I should behave well. If I harm other, sooner or later, I have to face this, the negative consequences. So you see, that concept also is very, very powerful to create conviction about this moral principle. So once we realize that, and then different religion, different philosophy is necessary. So long, all carry the message of love, message of uh, or say the forgiveness. Very good. And out of seven billion, about 
six billion believer. So there are variety, even within Buddhism. You see, there are different philosophical views. Mainly, uh, Vibhasic uh, school of thought, Sotantic school of thought, Chitta Mantra school of thought, Mathemika school of thought. All is a follower of Buddha. And as far as the Sanskrit tradition is concerned, all four schools of thought is carried by Nalanda institution. So these different schools of thought, there's a lot of differences, not only just mere differences, but contradictory sort of uh, uh, philosophies or views. It's necessary. About the follower of Buddha, there are different mental dispositions. Therefore, you see, different philosophical ways are necessary, relevant. These different philosophical views taught by Buddha himself. So this is very clear. We need different philosophy, different way of approach, in order to promote basic human values. Very OK. And now modern time, to non-believer, we also should have another way without talking religion. Simply use scientific finding, common experience, common sense. Through that way, we can educate these inner values. Okay, so now some question answer. How can one reconcile an attitude of non-violence when faced with a direct threat to one's safety and security? Demarcation, violence and non-violence, uh, not necessarily Siddhi uh, Kasoda, based on action but emotion. Non-violence means, and also forgiveness, tolerance means, you simply, you see, Kasoda, uh, not, not sort of forget what happened, no. If you really forget what they are wrongdoing, and then no basis for forgiveness, you keep so the memory, or you realize they are wrongdoing. So, uh, if necessary, take countermeasure without losing compassion. That's nonviolence. Uh, nonviolence does not mean you accept others' wrongdoing. Clear. So, some people, you see, really, Kasoda, harming on you. You have a right to take counter sort of measure, but without losing your as the recognition that the, your enemy, also human being, also member of the human society, respect, keep compassion. So action is concerned you can take appropriate countermeasure. Now, for example, when you sit, when you're sitting, one mad dog come, then uh, it is quite a foolish to say, oh, compassion, compassion, just sit there. That's foolish. Uh, either you have to run, run away, or you see, use, you see something, uh, something, you see, they <laughs> protect yourself. So, that does not mean violence. You see, you still keep your compassion. And meantime, now here, they take countermeasure in order to stop others' wrongdoing. is long run helping them. So, out of sense of compassion, of their well-being for long run, long term, long term way. Long run, take countermeasure is actually helping them in order to stop their wrongdoing. In the name of Ahimsa, let them carry all these wrong wrongdoing 
long run, they will suffer. So there are some stories in Buddha's previous lives like that. So as far as Buddhist, Buddhism is concerned, Buddhist philosophical views like that, violence, non-violence, real demarcation is not dependent on action, but motivation. Compassionate motivation, even harsh word is non-violence or some physical action, non-violence. Out of sort of want to cheat, want to explore, want to take advantage on us or on other, saying nice thing, uh, give some present. It's actually violence, clear. So real demarcation, violence, non-violence, it's motivation, clear. Next question. Our parents are constantly comparing us with other children. At times, this becomes depressing and leads to unhappiness. His Holiness, how can we overcome that? I think it depends your own sort of sight. You have the potential, opportunity, but due to, like, like myself, when I was, as a young student, I'm a very, very lazy student. So, <laughs> in the case of the student sight, a little bit lazy, in spite of this potential, mm, then, the parents' sort of attitude, it should use strengthening, uh, more sort of enthusiasm, work hard for study. Uh, if, you see, the other, if you see another sort of category, you see, you really, now, Sutta Kasota, you really, in spite of your effort, you really, you see, the uh, Kasota, uh, find it difficult. To, to become something uh, as a parent expected. Then, the, actually, the parent's expectation also unrealistic. And uh, that to explain your parent, the two situation. If parent is quite sort of knowledgeable, then they will understand. If still, unrealistically sort of what they express to you, then keep quiet. <laughs> Everybody wants a change in life, but no one is ready to change. What is the advice of His Holiness? I think, I think it, is, it is wrong to say nobody wants to change. I don't think. I think firstly, me want to change. <laughs> <laughs> and many, I think, uh, thinkers, uh, like scientists, they always you see, carry research, research, research. You see, they never content what they already learned or what, what already found. They still, you see, want to know more, deeper, deeper, deeper. So that also, you see, the sign of Human being, human nature is want to change, want to improve. But in the terms of sort of society, in the terms of sort of uh, certain religious sort of uh, belief, as I mentioned earlier, sometimes the certain sort of aspect of culture are not fit according to reality, but. For example, you see, our own case. Uh, I no longer believe the Mount Miru in the center of the uh, Earth, uh, or universe. Uh, so I publicly, you see, telling, I no longer believe that, even though some important Buddhist texts to see mention that. And then I believe is the scientific sort of way of explanation, world round. Even I think the fifth century, one Nalanda Buddhist master already expressed world is round. So when I sort of, sort of as the public is telling this, as some old uh, Tibetan scholars, or Buddhist scholars, Nalanda sort of was the, the scholar of Nalanda tradition, 
some of them a little bit sort of reluctant to accept that. So they do not want to change. They want to keep old thinking. So time, so things, research, analyze. As Buddha Shakyamuni stated, oh, oh my follower, monks, scholars should not accept my teaching out of faith, out of devotion, but rather thorough investigation and experiment. So change, very, very sort of important. So I think the certain sort of people's mind is something fixed. They do not want to change much. So these people thinking, now, now I think, example, whole world, world reality much changed, including climate, uh, global warming, changing, always changing. Uh, and today's reality, whole world, like one entity, East and West future depend West, depends as a Western future depend on East, like that. Similarly, North and South. So today's reality heavily interdependent. Then the boundary of religion, religious faith, boundary of national national culture, uh, nations. So these are not much relevant. Global economy, global warming. Sometimes global warming, these looks secondary. The national interest first. These are mistakes. I think sometime, one time in Copenhagen summit about global warming, about ecology, these things, climate change. Some important nations, they consider their national interest is first. So global sort of issue second. That's a mistake. So that summit, some people say, more or less failure. Because, you see, uh, the people's all thinking, uh, not, not relevant to today's reality. So reality always change. So mind should change, concept should change like that. Your Holiness, my question is, in what ways can we use our minds to make better health? Now, for example, you see, uh, in America, you see, some scientists, uh, uh, now they carry some kind of sort of certain project as a sort of experiment. A uh, few days or uh, two, three weeks, certain sort of training mind about, you see, the, some sort of uh, see the explanation, the value of love or compassion. Then each day, about 30 minutes or one hour, some training of mind, or other words we may call the meditation. So before that experiment start, check blood pressure and amount of stress and some other sort of test. Uh, then after three weeks, you see, training, again test, check. Blood pressure, much reduced. Or amount of stress also reduced. As a result, person become much happier. So that's the one now experiment. Uh, so number of scientists, now they say peace of mind, calm mind is very important for our health. So, calm mind, not drugs, alcohol, or just music, or picnic, or holiday. You see, when we you see, take some holiday, it's something like we, something like mean, painkiller. A short moment, you forget all your problems. 
as soon as you return your own place, problem still there. So again, it's difficult or some cause of frustration. The human way or wise way is to tackle the problem, in enter the problem itself. Then try to inspire that problem, try to keep peace of mind. Then that's really wise. Animal cannot do. Just escape from problems, animal also do. We human beings use this intelligence, analyze the problem. Uh, then the more sort of kasota analyze the problem. One eighth century, one one sort of great philosopher of Nalanda. He uh, express the curiosity. See, can you just say the curiosity? Roughly, roughly, roughly is a translation. Is it if the problem uh, something uh, can can be overcome, then no need to worry, uh, no need to frustration, make effort. If the problem no way to overcome. No use too much frustration. Very realistic. Okay. So you see, things, this is the way of thinking. Use human intelligence properly, effectively. Then, you see, your mind can, at the first lay, frustration reduce. Then anger reduce. So this brings peace of mind. We do that. Okay, that's the way. Uh, so then, press uh, one occasion, I think three, three, four years ago, in uh, near New York, Newark, one sort of meeting with some Nobel laureate and also some scientist. At, the, at that time, you see, one sort of press meeting, one press reporter is asked me about the uh, 15th Dalai Lama, reincarnation of Dalai Lama, 15th Dalai Lama. Then I jokingly, you see, respond to him, uh, take, uh, take, away, take my sort of glass, then look at him. Please judge my face, the reincarnation of Dalai Lama is whether quite hurry or not, then he say, oh, no hurry. <laughs> I think sometimes in hospital, when you see doctor, so of course, you see, uh, from time to time, some medical checkup. One, one occasion, you see, one the physician, you see, describe me as a young patient. Then I respond, I'm not young, I'm old. Then he told me, yes, his age is quite old, but his physical condition is quite young. <laughs> so these, I, I believe, uh, I believe, you see, my mind, as I previously responded to some questions, my mind, comparatively, I think quite peaceful. Occasionally, I also lose temper. <laughs> Shouting like that. <laughs> but basically, my mind, in spite of some problems or these things, my mind quite peaceful. That I think really sort of has a positive effect for my health. Okay. So like that, you, you can judge your, your sort of uh, friend. I think those people whose mental state usually is quite peaceful, I think their health better. Constant anger, constant worry, constant frustration, and too much alcohol, uh, very, very harmful for their physical health. Okay, like that. Next question? Okay. So, so, oh, I really, uh, oh yes, then? One last question? Where? Yeah.
Oh, finish. No? Then okay. Okay. I really very much enjoy uh, excellently quite hot sun. <laughs> Otherwise, see, I really enjoy. And uh, as I mentioned, nearly 80 years old person, now mixing with young people and a very beautiful, peaceful sort of environment that makes me psychologically feel younger. <laughs> so, thank you very much. And also, see, you, the Irish, see, this wonderful sort of opportunity, and also invited me. So, thank you very much. And you speak the, uh, see, very, very positively. So, thank you very much. Uh, uh, some, uh, I think in, in your sort of welcome speech, or Kasade, uh, divine persons are there. Divine. Uh, that I have some reservation. You know, I always telling people, we are same human being. If you consider me as a something special, something extraordinary, that very harmful. So you must think of me, same human brother, same human being. Mentally, emotionally, physically. Then differences those young people, you see, age differences. So, you, see, you are much younger, so you have more sort of potential to do something more. Uh, so, you see, you have more opportunity, longer future than me. Emotional, these things we are saying. So according to my own experience, you also, you see, uh, can be used, my experience. If I'm something, uh, sort of manifest manifestation of God or something, uh, then you can't, uh, you can't copy my experience. <laughs> so whenever I give talk, I always consider myself as just uh, like, 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 like you, yeah, same. Then I feel very close, because intimacy is where, intimacy is where. Oh, if I consider I'm Tibetan, I'm Buddhist, I'm the uh, grade of 14th Dalai Lama. Actually, you see, that kind of sort of, uh, sort of, that, that kind of way of thinking, Actually, I myself isolate from other. Result, I myself oh, become isolate. When I think we, you, we are same, and I feel very close, and I, I have this big sort of community where I'm one of one of you like that. Then I feel very happy. Too much emphasis, something special. Thus, I think you yourself makes Kasoda prisoner, right? prisoner of your own prison. When I was in Tibet, some people, some foreigner, is this kind of golden cage. It's quite, uh, quite true. Dalai Lama, holy person, <laughs> and, and lonely person, and gold cage. <laughs> with, with the name of, sort of the manifestation of our Lokitishwara, there's something very special. Actually, isolation. Yeah. <laughs> okay, like that. Thank you. So, so please think those points which I mentioned uh, should not think, oh, Dalai Lama told us, should not think that way. Those points which I mentioned, analyze by yourself and experiment. If you find, as Buddha stated, if you further research, further experiment, uh, and analyze, then if you feel some useful, then think more, implement. Your life should carry according to these sort of principles. If you feel oh, not much sort of useful, not very relevant, your life, then okay. Just 
live here these ideas, then outside, uh, not necessary to carry these ideas. Okay. <laughs> Thank you.